out, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined all the way from Lancashire in the UK from Martin Huntbatch. How are you doing, Martin? Very well, thanks. Excited. I wish I was in San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> well, you live in a very beautiful part of the world, let's be honest. I mean, Lancashire is a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and so Martin and uh, Lindsay, uh, your partner, run Jammy Digital, an award-winning SEO and content marketing agency for businesses that aren't afraid to stand out. They do their best work with personal brands, helping them find and retain better, higher-paying clients who don't gobble up their time like Pac-Man. For those of you under the age of whatever, go look it up in retro games. <laughs> and you've just uh, and you've just published your book, um, which is called Content Fortress: A Simple Content Marketing Strategy That Helps You Attract Customers You Love to Do Business With. And what we're going to talk about today is literally that is how how you can create sales content that help you close sell faster and and close more deals. Um, so let's get straight into it, Martin. There's content in this content, isn't there? Because, you know, there's been this whole thing around, you know, using content and content marketing and all of that kind of stuff. But it seems to me that a lot of it just focused on let's get content out there and like throw content out. And there's, you know, very little like strategy or even value to the strategy behind it or value to the content. Yeah, exactly. And I think this is a big concern is that everybody knows they need to be producing content. So you either have people who are, um, putting out just just ample content that's just let's just be as helpful as we possibly can let's try to beat the competition like for instance SaaS businesses they pump a lot of content out there just to compete and you have some people that are just so protective over their content they're not really sure what to post and they're overthinking it and they end up not putting anything out in the world so there's a really nice you know middle ground um, to suit any business you know there's always a certain amount of content that you can commit to and feel comfortable with to get traction. And I think that's the reality is that, you know, you want to be putting out content to increase your authority and your expertise in the market, but you also want to be putting out enough to get more traffic leads and sales and rankings as well, because volume does help. Yeah, and and no, absolutely, and and I think that's where you have to really start looking at, at at a strategy and a roadmap and what kind of content. And the other thing too, I think Martin, sometimes people don't understand is you can you can create a piece of content, right? And then you can turn it into multiple different assets. So you can have your volume, and at the same time, you know, you can be more efficient in your output. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a case of, you know, you, this is why it's so important for you as a business owner or as the marketing person to decide what your goals are. Because what we found is that rather than just kind of just putting loads of content out there, you have to be more efficient with the content you do produce. So if your goal this quarter or this month is to get more leads and get more email subscribers, you have to be very specific about it. We've just found that when you are more specific about what you're trying to accomplish, you're able to then um, repurpose that content and distribute it across multiple platforms and just increase your efficiency. So rather than just more, 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 you know, it's about thinking smarter, produce fewer pieces of high quality content that you can then redistribute over and over and over again to help you achieve that goal. For a lot of businesses, they're not 100% clear on what they're trying to accomplish. They're just putting out content, hoping one of its, hoping one of the articles hit or one of the videos hit, and ultimately they end up failing and they're not sure what to track, what what's getting results. Um, and this is sometimes the problem that we see when people invest heavily in content. They're just putting out as much as they can, hoping that something's going to stick. Uh, whereas a lot of the time, you know, you might not have as much time or resources in order to do that. So therefore, you have to be extremely specific and efficient with the way that you produce, and repurpose and redistribute that content. Yeah. And and a good point that you just made there about just being, you know, being care careful and being selective uh, about the content, because to your point is you're far better off being specific and making sure that the content is of high value and is is doing something is because there's an awful lot of vague and general content out there. And let's face it. You know, we get kind of turned off if we if we click on a headline that's see, and then we read something, and then it's like, 
yeah, so what? Uh, so I think you have to, the more specific and the more valuable you can be. And I think that's the thing is that you have to put in the work up front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you do. And I, and I do think it it comes from knowing your clients, knowing mm-hmm. your customers, knowing your audience. And when you actually speak to them more and more, a lot of times you you have this problem with bigger businesses where the marketing department go and do their research and you've got salespeople and customer service teams actually speaking to people day in, day out. And there's always this big, you know, just chasm between them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just find that when you speak to the customer service team, when you speak to the salespeople, they're coming up with questions and concerns every day that content can answer. Content mm-hmm. can make their lives easier. It can make your lives easier because you know that people are searching for it because they're you're getting that immediate feedback. And when you really take into account what people want rather than what you want, then you can really come up with some really nice content ideas that always hit because people are asking constantly. And at the very least, even if you publish some content that doesn't get first page rankings or doesn't, you know, get a ton of traffic or search volume, you still know that these people are out there searching for it because you've got the team telling you that these people are looking for it. And by filling that need, you're supporting the team, you're supporting your customers, your clients. You know, it's just one of those things. As an example, one of the early pieces of content that we produced was not from keyword research and not from looking at search volume and competitor analysis. We produced a piece of content, a really in-depth article, because the question kept coming up over and over and over again. People were saying to us, listen, we've got a website. We've had a website built a few years ago uh, by another agency, and we're just not ranking on the first page of Google, and we're not sure how to fix it. So we did some keyword research as to why that might, like, as to how many people search for that same question. And because it's a slightly weird question, right. you know, why I'm not, why, why are we not ranking on Google? What, what's the situation? It was difficult to gauge how many people searched for it. So we published that content anyway, and we just committed to, if these people are saying it, there must be a problem. There must be other people out there experiencing that issue. So we created a piece of content that nobody else had written before, which is here are 11 reasons you're not ranking in Google and how to fix it. And we trusted our feedback and our clients that were saying that to us. And we published it. And that continued just to get results after results after results, getting sales, inquiries left, right and center, because we decided to ignore the data on the keyword research and actually listen to our customers that were speaking to us every day. Well, I think that's a, I think that's a fantastic, uh, that's a fantastic story because I think that does put things in context because yeah, we become, we, we become hung up on doing things the way everybody else does them and, you know, and doing all of that and that, and the research and all that obviously has its place. Um, but being, but being creative, I, I love it. I'm just looking at one of your chapter titles here that just plays into that. I love the one where you say your customer is aware of their problem, but not your solution. And I think that's what you're talking about. Even with that piece of content, like you were tapping into I understand what your problems are. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. And now you have the solution for it. But I love that thing about they're aware of their problems. You just have to resonate with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I do, I do think that this is a problem that bigger businesses um, tend to lose. You know, mm-hmm. as they grow, you have the marketing and the, and the, and then the design team and things. They, they, they get further and further away from their customers. So it is important that you have that that team vibe and you have that that data coming in. And it's important for marketers to actually get on the front line, actually speak to the customer support, speak to the sales team and actually create content that they know people are going to need. I just think it's so important um, to have that, you know, data and have that knowledge. It just makes your life so much easier. It really, really does. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what would your advice be to somebody right now who's uh, maybe they're they're going to revamp their content strategy or they're going to start something? What what's the best place to start? I think it's important. I come back to goals, which is a lot of the times people think, you know, who's your target audience? What's the avatar? How old are they? What's their name? All mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. We actually come from this from a uh, based on our experience. And that's what are your goals as a business? So yes, thinking about clients is one thing and customers and revenue and all that good stuff. But what's your goal? A lot of the times you'll have different goals. So we, for instance, had a goal initially of getting more website visitors. So we produce content based on what that would, what would happen if we published lots of content and we wanted to increase website visitors. The next thing that we did 
was we wanted to attract better clients. So we started using content to pre-qualify people. Mm. So, you know, and, and, and as time goes on, you might want to introduce more services. So you produce content in order to start teaching a little bit more about those services. So the goal that you have for your business is going to change and it's going to be different from somebody else. So really, really is important that you spend some time to think about what your ideal business would look like and put together a content plan. Um, and thankfully, you know, we put all of this information in our book. There's lots of different mm -hmm. goals that you might have. And luckily there's eight different pillars within the content fortress that you can actually focus on first. You know, it's not specifically in order, but you can, Focus on, you know, we're getting too many inquiries from the wrong kind of customers. Great. What do we do? We create repelling content. Great. There's a pillar for that. Maybe you just want to attract more of your ideal clients right. um, that might not know that you're the right fit for them. Great. Then there's attracting content. So these very easy, simple ways for you to achieve your business goals without having to go through the rigmarole of thinking, let's just produce hundreds of pieces of content and hope for the best, see what happens, hope we get more traffic, hope this, mm -hmm. hope that. Just have a goal and try to focus on that first before moving on to another goal. Um, so I definitely think that it, it does come from a place of thinking about what you want as a business and what your immediate goals are. And if you yeah. can map out your content for the full 12 months based on what the goals would be for this quarter, the next quarter, and so on, then you can't go far wrong as long as you have a strategy and a blueprint and some examples of content that you can create. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's excellent advice. And I think, yeah, I, I think you can see from a lot of the content that's just churned out there that it's not, it's, there's no particular goal in mind. I think the other thing, um, Martin, that people fall into the trap of is just, um, publishing on all the different platforms, just like spray and pray. Like, uh, I'm just going to be on, I'm going to be everywhere, right? I'm just going to be yeah. everywhere because, you know, my, my customers are probably everywhere, but that's rarely the right strategy. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'll give you a prime example of something that happened yesterday. So um, we've got a client who deals with uh, internal teams, communication, that kind of thing, uh, quite specific. She decided to focus on blogging as a primary objective. Mm -hmm. I'm going to focus on producing long form blog content. Great. How are you going to distribute that? Well, she doesn't have an email list right now because she's just growing one. Mm -hmm. So we decided to point her in the direction of LinkedIn. Um, and it just so happens with those two platforms, she produces the content. We help her produce the content long form. She then takes sections of that content and then creates multiple LinkedIn posts for each and every article. Mm -hmm. Now, it's quite a sensitive topic. So not many people are going to engage like I'm having problems in my business with HR. Yeah. Not many people are going to engage. So on the face of it, she might think, well, I'm not really getting much engagement. But she actually got her first sale yesterday from a couple of LinkedIn posts mm -hmm. after she started this strategy. So just because you're not getting the engagement, just because you're not getting the, the likes and the comments doesn't necessarily mean that people aren't ready to buy from you. You just need to start publishing content. So it might be different for you. You might focus on TikTok. You might decide to take that long form of content and redistribute into five, 10 different short form videos. Perfect. Wherever your audience are and whatever your business goals are, choose the platform that's most relevant right now. You know, if you do have an email list and you can involve them as well, if you can publish that content, you can get your email list involved, then there's going to be people, there's going to be lurkers around, you know, the outside that may have not have engaged with you before that will jump on the fact that you've published some really helpful content. You're distributing it. You're proud of it. You're out there pushing it out into the world. I'll be honest, that's one of the biggest issues we see is that companies that do invest in content, they mm -hmm. do publish content, they don't spend the time distributing it. And that's one yeah. of the biggest mistakes we see because Google will love it if you're out there pushing, shouting about that content that you've spent you know, a few days mm -hmm. or weeks on. You know, If you publish an article, 3,000 words, you've really, really put your effort in, get out there, share it with your email list, redistribute it many times over on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook, get people back to that content. And even if you're just out there sharing the content without a link back to the original source, it's still extremely valuable. And that's what happened yesterday when that client said, I've only yeah. published a few articles, but I got a client from it, from a LinkedIn post mm -hmm. that no one was engaging with. They DM'd me and they, they, they hired me on the spot directly related to me posting that content. So don't be worried about people not engaging with your content or making it yeah. look like not many people seeing it. 
putting your knowledge and experience out in the world has massive impact, even if you don't think it does. Yeah, and that's a great example because I mean, if your if your post gets twenty views and you get a and you get, and you get a sale out of it, that's better than getting five thousand views of the wrong people and not getting anything. Um, so I, I love that that idea of of being very targeted and specific and the other thing as you said is having a strategy for for continually marketing that content because it, as you said i mean just because i send out something today it doesn't mean i'm going to look at it um, i mean i may look at it if you send it to me next week i may whatever i may see it on a tweet there are so many different ways but you're right if you put invest all that time and effort into creating the content and you don't invest the same amount of energy in promoting it, then you're uh, unfortunately it's uh, it's probably going to be a waste of time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can get away with publishing one article every two weeks, but if you promote it effectively yeah. and you splice it up and it's valuable enough, chunk by chunk by chunk, then you can really make it feel like you're everywhere, like you're producing content all the time, every single week, every other day. But really. If you put the effort in on the front end and you really create a piece of content that helps you achieve your business goals because of the way it's positioned, then it also helps people and it's a step-by-step -step guide and it's just packed with value, then you can share that many times over. Every time that we say to someone, how much are you sharing your content right now? And they say, well, I'll post about it once when it's published. And we yeah. look at that content and we can see the reason that you've only shared it once is because there's pretty much only one thing to say about it. <laughs> So it does come from having a proper content plan. It does come from having incredible value, you know, packed with stories and tips and templates and examples. If you create a piece of content that's jam-packed with value, that will give you so much runway in order to get traction, maybe not on one post, but maybe if you take the second section and you redistribute that. You know, this is why we made an effort um, when ChatGPT came out mm -hmm. that we an effort to really try to integrate that within our business and teach our clients how to say, look, here's this amazing piece of content that we've created. Here's exactly what you can post on Twitter today. Here's exactly what you can post on LinkedIn. Here's how you can take this, you know, use AI tools to repurpose things. It's far easier because it takes the tone of voice yeah. and the style, mm -hmm. you know, use the original content that you've invested time or money in and get just so much life out of it that you, you know, you've constantly got things to post across yeah. social. Um, before you know it, you're publishing on LinkedIn, maybe originally, but you can see how that might turn to a Twitter thread or a um, a post in a group or something for Quora, like an answer to a Quora. Before you know it, that one answer that we've created long form has been distributed 10, 20, 30 times over, and you're just spreading yourself out there yeah. without actually doing that much extra work. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm glad you raised the uh, the chat GPT and and AI in general because I do think that um, the tools are, are are fantastic. But the thing that you said is you know take that original content and use it in the tools. I think people are falling into the trap of maybe just trying to get the tools to create everything for them from scratch. And those are um, Google and those are going to get you on that one because they're looking for like pure AI generated content, but taking original content and then using the tools to enhance it, that's the way to go. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can create an incredible piece of content based on your experience, based on your stories. ChatGPT doesn't know your experience. They don't know your, your stories. They don't know your examples. They don't know your case studies. Um, they don't know your humor. Like that's what makes a powerful piece of content. Mm -hmm. All of those individual elements that you have gathered from your experience and from your, uh, your 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 stories that you've had within your business. Yes, ChatGPT can help you come up with the odd example or maybe a template that someone can take to complement the work that you've put into yeah. it. But it's far better if you give that a an original piece of content, 1500 word article that you've created and say, I really want you to summarize this as a LinkedIn post or I want you to turn this into a Twitter thread. You know, you might have to play around with it, but it's just far easier if you use it as a tool to distribute rather than to create. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. And I think that's fantastic advice. Um, and, and a great, great advice that you've offered throughout this whole uh, chat this morning, and Martin. All of Martin's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. And I'm going to put your um, book back up on screen while you're talking. Fantastic. Yeah, so I run Jammy Digital, a content marketing agency. 
where we create long form content and also short form videos as well. Um, so feel free to get in touch and, you know, let us know what you think of the book. Um, if you do send me an email I'll and you um, you want a copy of the book, I'll also give you a free mini course. So that's martin at jammydigital.com. We've got a little mini course, six, seven videos, and that's um, absolutely free. Fantastic. Well, listen, um, thanks again, uh, Martin. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you.